Welcome to Resorts World Casino here. Uh, Jeff Goodman, Rob Doster, we are live. It was WCC and Mountain West Media Day today, but in the middle of WCC Media Day, in the middle of us interviewing, I believe it was the St. Mary's players? Yeah, it was right when they sat down. Yeah, when the St. Mary's players sat down, Jeff Goodman uh, got up from the table, sent a microphone flying, almost knocked over a couple cups of soda. But the reason he was doing it was uh, one of the bigger stories you've probably ever broken in your life. A Hall of Famer, a national champion, a guy that built Virginia into arguably the best program in the ACC over the last decade, a team that had to get mentioned in the same breath as Duke and North Carolina every single time you mentioned the best teams in the ACC, he's retired. Effective and, and, tomorrow, basically. So before we before we get into it, just talk to us about, tell us the news. Yeah. Go to your old school's reporter roots. Tell us the news. Tell us what happened. Tell us when it's gonna when it becomes official. Tell us what you know. And tell and tell us why. Yeah, I mean they're gonna make an announcement official. They they put out a statement uh, after I broke the news, and they're gonna do some sort of press conference tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's Friday uh, at eleven, and you know Tony Bennett. From my sources, again, not health related at all. Tony Bennett's fine. Fifty five years old. And I've been talking about this for a couple of years of, of that the, the changing landscape is going to claim some of these coaches. It already has, right, Jay Wright. But even more so now. Jay Wright got out before it really got going here with NIL and the portal and all this stuff. And, you know, I had a conversation with Tony Bennett uh, at the Peach Jam recently, and he said if, if he can't retain his players and, and build a culture there, that it's going to be – very difficult for him to stay in this thing. And I think it was part of that because he had a lot of new faces this year. I think it was part of dealing with the agents and that part of it, which he doesn't really enjoy all that much. I just think as the season got closer, Rob, I think Tony Bennett realized, like, I'm not all in. I'm not all in. I think he was hopeful, and he was at ACC Media Day a week ago. Well, but that- as it got closer, I think his in his mind, he was like, you know what? I'm not going to cheat these players. That, that was going to be my, my next question here, right? So I, I think that knowing how some of this stuff works, my belief is that you, and you don't have to tell me whether or not this is true, but my belief is that you had heard from somebody close to Tony that said that this might be something that could happen is why you got that sense. Maybe it was Tony himself. Whatever yeah, it was, it was that, that conversation. But, so my, my question is when – when did he make this decision that it was time to be up? Was this something where he decided over the summer and then he wanted to make it be a situation where the guy no. that he wanted, no. who I think you no, said No, I don't think be, that was it. Ron Sanchez will probably be the interim. You think as it got closer to the season, he was like, I Yeah, I don't think it was – I don't think he knew because I, I don't think Tony Bennett would go out in the peach yet. Like, I don't think he would have went out recruiting. You know, he's not a guy that's going to go out. Like, he, he schmoozes with coaches and he's got a lot of friends in the industry, but I – I don't think he would do it just to wait to put this in a spot where Virginia couldn't do anything else but give his good friend Ron Sanchez um, the job. Because, again, it could be an interim one-year deal, and then they go on a different route after this season if they're not really good. I just think, again, it, it's the culture, the changing landscape wore Tony Bennett down. And I don't know what he's going to do now. I haven't talked to him. I don't know what he's going to do, If, but I don't think – I think he'll miss it. I do. And and I've always said, like, I think Tony Bennett, maybe the best thing for him to do is be an assistant in the NBA where he can coach. He can coach. And that's all he's got to do. I just think there was there was too much going on in the sport. And he, according to my sources, he didn't see an end coming. He didn't see a change coming anytime soon. And I think that's a lot of coaches right now. It's – it definitely is a grind, right? I think part of the reason you're seeing a lot of the young guys that are really thriving in this new marketplace is because they are into the coaching side of it as opposed to – like the, the basketball coaching side of it as opposed to the human development, human coaching side of it, which I think uh, Tony took a lot of 
pride in and a lot of value in. But the other part of it is it's the amount of time that it takes to do all of this stuff. Like it, it, it wears you down. And I've seen you go through it too. Like it wears you down having to be connected to this all the time. It wears you down having to deal with different people all the time. And I got to imagine like when you're trying to be a guy that is working with a four or five year goal with every player that you bring into the program, having to reassess every couple of months with the player, with the parent, with the agent, with the AAU coach, with the people around them, because they're not getting the minutes you thought they were going to get at the start, because the, the they, they wanted to be able to play a certain amount as a freshman and you didn't get it. Because and red shirts have been a huge thing for Virginia basketball. We saw it with Malcolm Brogdon. Um, you saw it with DeAndre Hunter. Those guys turned out pretty well as basketball players. Uh, I think that that, as much as anything, is what is wearing guys like Tony Bennett down. And that doesn't mean that the way that some of the new generation does it, like a guy like a Jerome Tang or a Pat Kelsey or someone that can kind of come in and bring in the energy. And but part like, of that is, okay, Jerome Tang, two names you just mentioned, they finally got their shot. Mm -hmm. So – Tony Bennett's made enough money. The money money isn't really the factor with Tony Bennett anymore. So he can – same thing with Jay Wright. They've done it. They've won championships, right? I mean, he won it all in 2019. Maybe if he hadn't won it all, maybe, maybe you know, Mark Few hasn't won it all yet. He's a few years older. He's 61. Maybe Mark Few, if he'd already won one, he might do the same thing Tony Bennett and Jay Wright have done. Yeah, and, and I hear that, but it's also – you know, we, we just talked to few for yeah. for uh, about 25 yeah. minutes here. And you know what I took away from it more than anything else? Like, we were like, hey, man, you found a great work-life balance. He's like, it wasn't great when I was working with the Olympics. Like, he – That think, was his choice. Yeah, that was that's, his choice. That's firmly his choice. Yeah, but I, I think that he – I mean, you, you allude to this all the time. Like, he's found the balance where he's able to do what he elite, can do. Elite at it. Well – So was Tony for the most part. But again, I think you feel like but it's also, I'm not look sure at, I look can at, compete. Look at what Gonzaga, like, look at what they brought back. The six most returning minutes, yeah. all of the talent they got coming back. I don't think they lost anyone in the portal this year. Whereas Virginia's had a ton of turnover recently in the yeah. last couple of years. And I'm sure it's been a grind building up. Here's a question that I have. When Mark Turgeon retired. That, Mark did he, Turgeon? Mark Turgeon. When he, did, he got fired. Did he, no, he quit like eight months into or eight, yeah, eight games yeah. into the season, right? Right. And he got – is he coaching still? Where is he? Now? No, he's out. He's, he's, he's out. out. So if he retired eight games into the season, I remember one of the big criticisms I saw was Mark Churchin quitting, his quitting on his team. Right. right. Mark sure. Churchin bailing on his team. Like yep. these kids bought, to, bought it to him. Tony Bennett brought in four transfers, I believe, and then a couple of freshmen to the program. And there were kids that came back to the program, obviously, when they had opportunity. No, I, elsewhere. I know where you're going with this. And no, I, I don't think there should be any criticism warranted because, again, I think he did it before the season. Now, these kids can get out if they want. They can transfer. I hope nobody transfers at this point, mid-October. But the difference was things were already looking kind of grim for Maryland at that point. And, and I do think Turge kind of quit on him. I do, in the middle of the year. I, I think Tony Bennett, it was more of like, my heart is not into this right now. I'm not going to do this and not be able to give what these kids need from me. I think it was more that than anything else. You know, I, I think that's the why now. Yeah. With Mark Turge, it was like, what? That he was, one felt he like, was worn down. He and, was, and I also he feel like out. I don't want to throw Mark Turgeon. He's probably going to be fired anyway. Yeah, I'm like, Mark, something. I don't want to throw right. him under the bus. Right. But, like, he saw the writing on right. the wall. He's Agreed. like, what's the point of going yes. through this? It's just going to end at the yes. end of the season. Let's just rip the band-aid right. off. That's right. Whereas it feels like with Tony, and um, I haven't talked – I've literally been sitting here on a live yeah. stream. At, we're at WCC Media Day. I've been sitting on a live stream for three hours. I've talked to nobody. But it feels like with Tony, this is something where he doesn't want – like he wants to keep coaching, but he just knows that this is not – his I think heart's he, not in it, yeah. and he's, he, he's fallen out of love with what this iteration of college basketball is, and he doesn't feel it's right for his play. Is that, is that, that's my read on it? Is yeah, that I think that's fair. I think that's fair that if everything was where it was five years ago, Tony Bennett would keep going. But I, same thing with Jay Wright. You could probably say the same thing about Jay Wright, right? He'd probably still be in if things hadn't started to change. Um, but they have, and, and – 
my worry is these aren't the last ones. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, by the way, again, like Jay Wright, Tony Bennett, um, you know, there, there aren't many that have, have gone out uh, towards, you know, when they, were, when they were on top. Virginia had another one years ago. All right, there's there's two things that I want to uh, I want to um, get in here. Uh, is Tony Bennett? Is he, a, is he has he been in the hall? He's not in the Hall of Fame. No, he's I not. In he's, yeah, no, so he'll see a Hall of Fame. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, he, he's dominated the ACC for a long period of time. So I wouldn't. And I wouldn't. I don't, a, I don't even think he won it all. There shouldn't be an I think. Yeah, I think it. How many I, wins does he have? How many? Four hundred and thirty-three. Yeah, I mean that's. But, but look at the places that he did it at. Yeah, Washington State, Washington State for Sweet three Sixth years, Sixth. fifteen years at. He won a national title yeah. at UVA. Yeah. He won more regular season ACC championships at UVA in a ten year stretch than Coach K and Coach uh, and, and Roy Williams did combined. Like, I to me, the only knock would be the longevity aspect of it. He did it for right. Right. He basically did it for a decade. Is doing it for a decade enough? To make you a Hall of Famer, and for yeah, me, I think so. I when think you so. win a title and you have yeah. that level of sustained success for ten years, you won a title. You got to be a Hall. I mean, of Famer. you won a right? title, and you're really good for a long enough period of time. I, I don't, I don't think there's any question. I, I think Tony Bennett will be in the Hall of Fame, uh, and he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And you know, and the only question I have is whether or not this is really it. You know, saying retirement is this really it for Tony Bennett, or could he, in two years, regret the move? Only be 57, you know, and, and somebody reaches out to him and says, hey, you know what? It's gotten a little bit better now. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I think the possibility of coaching at a lower level, we heard, um, we heard uh, uh, Wayne Tinkle talking about this, yeah. like possibility of coaching at a lower level where you can still just be a coach. You don't have to worry about some of that other stuff. Um, I think that you mentioned the NBA, maybe but he also could be, like um, he's maybe made, he could be Doug Gottlieb's assistant coach at Green Bay, where maybe, he, you know, maybe. Wisconsin. I mean, he's made what forty, fifty million dollars in his career. So, I don't know. Maybe. I have no idea. He's he's made enough a lot money. of money, he's a lot of enough money. money where he can probably he can do whatever spend the rest wants. of his life doing whatever yep. he wants. Yep. So, um, last thing that I want to get to, just we can be quick on this because we have the ACC preview show coming up next week. But where does this leave Virginia? Ron Sanchez, we saw him at Charlotte, yeah. right? Um, is, that, is that official yet that he's going to be? No, no, no. They have not put out anything. But I, is that what you're? All signs are pointing to the fact that Ron Sanchez, who was brought back to Virginia, he was Tony's right hand man uh, before he went to be a head coach at Charlotte, came back last year. That he'll be the the interim. So right now, your your best, your educated guess is you're not reporting it. Even it's more than educated, probably. Yeah. You know, again, I'm not a hundred percent, but. Yeah. So, so where I mean, he did not have, he wasn't bad. He was Charlotte. solid. He was, he was solid. He was Charlotte. fine at Charlotte, yeah, yeah. but like he wasn't when you, if he was, well, how good Charlotte, is their team? I mean, if, if, if they have a, that's my, if favorite. they have a very good season, Ron Sanchez will be the head coach. Well, what kind going of, forward. here's my question. What kind of season can you expect them to have? Because I'll tell you this, yeah. talking with T.O., yeah. talking with Randolph Childress, yeah. Yeah. The John Henson said the you same like thing. The here. Well, they said, I'm not betting against Tony Bennett. So yeah. if you're saying I'm not betting against Tony Bennett, and then right. you look at the pieces that with they brought Grant, in. With Ron Sanchez. With the Ron only good Sanchez. thing is Sanchez has Jason Williford played there, has been there a long time. And I actually feel bad that Willie, Jay Willie wouldn't get a shot at the interim because he played there. Uh, and he's turned down other jobs, other low to mid-major jobs. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you – again – you can do one of a couple things, right? If you finish in the top three, I think of the ACC. If it's like Duke, Carolina, Virginia, and you're Ron Sanchez, you're okay. Or if you go to a Sweet 16, For, one or the other. One or the other, and you're going to be the permanent I, guy. I think if he gets this team in the tournament, based off of everything okay, that's happened. that's fair. If he gets Virginia to the tournament. Yeah, maybe. And and honestly, like I, I think that there's probably enough there to get to the tournament. Um, I don't know if there's enough there to – Without Tony Bennett coaching, look, with Tony Bennett there, I think I pick him second or third in the ACC. Without Tony Bennett there, I think that they're, you're looking at them as like in the NC State kind of realm of, uh, of potential. So it's going to be interesting. That's where I'm at with it. If he makes the tournament, though, I will be the one advocating for him to get the job. Listen, this has been an emergency podcast. We wanted to jump on here to be able to make sure that we had something for you guys, giving a full reaction and a full breakdown of 
uh, some of the biggest things that we're going to find in college basketball probably this season. Right? Yeah, I don't there. think we'll get a, big, I mean, a Hall of Famer likely retiring yeah. two and a half weeks before the season it's starts. One of the biggest stories. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that we got you guys an emergency podcast. We wanted to make sure that we got a proper uh, reaction, proper breakdown of what happened here. But uh, we'll see where this leads moving forward. Um, in the meantime, I will just say, starting on Monday, October 21st, and every night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the next week, the 28th to the 31st, we are going to be really diving into season preview shows. We have one. Uh, the first one's going to be a bold prediction show on Monday, October 21st, and we will have a full ACC preview. Myself, John Henson, Tyler Hansborough, Randolph Childress, all of that will be happening on Tuesday, uh, October 22nd. So um, we have CAA Media Day coming up here soon. Uh, we're going to get back to work because we got a lot of prep to do for that. I have to go get on the red eye here. I got to go hit the blackjack. Hours. So I got to make my money back. You do have to make your money back. So I uh, appreciate you being here. Field of 68, Jeff Goodman, Rob Doster. See you guys next week.